I'm with uh, Jim Carrington here in Norwich and um, Jim is the president of the Danforth Center and his research is on epigenetics, so you're in an excellent position to tell us about David's work. David who? Oh, David Balcom. <laughs> yeah, that's right. David Balcom, of course. <laughs> yes, well, I've, so I've known David for, oh, 25 years or so, and it's interesting you mentioned epigenetics. It, he didn't start off in epigenetics. David started off in wheat, and then he became a very, very good virologist and did some very important work. Um, but the, the important point, I think, for this celebration yeah. is he was doing that work in the Sainsbury Laboratory, mm -hmm. which has this idea that it's First who, then what? Yes. And so first you had David Balkan, right. and now ask what he was able to do in yeah. this incredible environment that provided resources, yeah. colleagues, facilities. Uh, and what he did is he made some critical observations that broke open the field of RNA silencing. And I was on council starting in 1995 and was able to watch this progression from virology yeah. through to making uh, some of the most important fundamental discoveries in plant science and biology in the latter part of the 20th century. Um, and that path took him out of the virological realm and into everybody else's domain because he yeah, made such exactly. important discoveries about small RNAs. I can tell you that this had a great influence on our lab because we too were primarily virologists. Uh, but due to David, we, and it's not just my lab, but thousands of labs yeah. around the world, changed what they were doing once we understood uh, what David was finding. First, with the role of of RNA being the secret yep. sauce in right. gene silencing, yep. uh, then the discoveries of small RNAs, uh, the ways in which small RNAs and silencing are used yep. in biology as an antiviral defense response, for example. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it seems like it's uh, essentially David obviously being an exceptional scientist, but being also in the right environment that allowed him to flourish and, and do all this work. That's right. You can have a great seed with superior breeding, uh, but if you don't plant it in the right space, in the right, yes. in the right uh, environment, at the right time, uh, that seed won't do much good. Yeah. Very good. One of the things that happens when you have a great scientist is they tend to attract really good people into the lab. Absolutely. And David uh, was fortunate enough, smart enough, good enough to attract some of the very best, people like Olivier Boine, yep. Andrew Hamilton, Absolutely. Louise Jones, mm -hmm. um, and many, many others. Yep. These were exceptional scientists. Um, and, you know, in large part, the legacy of the Sainsbury Laboratory isn't just the David Balcoms and the Paul Schulte Leifords, um, it's the Olivier Boines as well. Yes, and that's what we're recognizing in this event. We're recognizing yeah. the alumni. Many of them were students and postdocs. Very good.